the Central Weekly, a weekly podcast from the Central Podcast Network. Mm-hmm. You've got Mr. John Hinninger. And Jared the Chrome coming at you live. Not live. Not live. <laughs> Recorded <laughs> on a Friday afternoon. Here it is. Here's what we're going to be looking at. Episode number 48 of the Central Weekly. We have a very special guest. Not one, not two. Three. It kind of do- does sound like wah, wah, okay. only three when we had 16 you did have a lot. last yeah. time, but two of the 16 are back. Josh and Erica Caps, the one, the yeah. two only. Josh and Erica Caps are going to join us for a conversation. It was neat because we kind of heard a little bit about what's going on with their lives mm-hmm. in a group setting mm-hmm. last week because they're part of the Pierce group. Right. But now we got to sit down with Josh and Erica, talk all things relationships, family, and working here at the church for Erica. Very cool. And we had somebody join us. We had our youngest guest Jovi? on the Central Weekly, Jovi, Jovi Caps, joined yeah. us. She told some jokes, did some things, wow. ate a mandarin orange. It was a, it's it's going to be a great. You're you're not going to want to miss it. Did she get the orange from a Happy Meal? Because she was telling me here the other day that what Happy Meal has oranges. I don't know. She said I'm going to get orange. Well, I remember the Happy Meals at McDonald's used to have orange as an option. I don't know, but man, I'm going to have to ask her. I'm going to have to go. We may have to bring her back on just to ask her <laughs> that. But here's the thing: I love Josh and Erica Caps because yeah. they're just quite. Quiet, I don't, it sounds bad to say simple people because they're not simple people, but like in a good way. Does mm. that make sense? Because mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of times we can be overcomplicated in things. Yeah. And Josh and Erica are straightforward, just off the Genuine, bone type of people. Is true, that expression? Off the bone? I don't know that it is, but, uh, <laughs> I, you know, no, for sure. They are uh, genuine, good, godly people oh, yeah. raising uh, a godly, oh, yeah. uh, just a, a good daughter. And so mm-hmm. I'm, I'm super glad they're part of this church yeah. family, and I'm excited to hear your conversation with them. Well, here's the thing. We're also going to talk about comparison. This is week number four of Fresh, New, Full. FNF. Yep. And we're going to look at, you looked at comparison. Yes. And gosh, is it a timely, timely lesson for us? Mm. Comparison. I mean, we talk, we've talk. we talked, of course, about anxiety and rest and the company we keep this week talking about uh, comparison. Comparison could be the most broadly applicable oh, yeah. um, topic that we've looked at yet. Yeah. And you could really go a number of different directions with mm-hmm. it. But at the core of it, um, comparison is... A lose lose, right? I mean, yeah. like it, it's not God's will. It either puts us too high or too low yep. in our own minds, and puts us striving to be something that we're not, get something that we don't need, all that stuff. Because at the core of comparison is selfishness, plain and simple. You're sure. either, like you said, you're either thinking too high, highly of yourself, mm-hmm. or too lowly of yourself, right? And I think that's, I mean, that's the trouble with a lot of us today, especially, especially in the church, mm-hmm. and how we have a society that is on our phones, and we're looking at somebody's back. Bex- and you've get, you brought some good culturally specific things into this lesson I thought were really apical. Mm. No, it's not it. <laughs> well, here we go. You you started off okay. with looking at your Bible character last week was Peter, right? which was so good. Again, I think Thanks. that was a godly given um, example in Peter. You know, I've had a couple people message me yeah. this week and say, hey, I never thought of it mm-hmm. like that. I mean... I hadn't either. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's just a kind of an eye opener for me. And I'm glad that people connected with that. Yeah. And so this time you looked in Samuel and you looked at Samuel really for the, the reason, because Samuel was the prophet in the Old Testament that was given the task of bringing in the new king. Right. You know, they, the, all the Israel and we'll, we won't even get into why mm-hmm. the Israelites wanted a king, mm-hmm. but they wanted a king and they wanted it now. And God finally said, well, I'm going to give you into it. Yeah. And uh, Samuel picked Saul. And it was kind of funny, though, that I thought, you know, Samuel's a different kind of guy rather than the culture. You Mm -hmm. would think that he might have had a heads up that it's not going to look like the guy that's head and shoulders above the rest. Oh, nice, Jared. But... He, that's what he thought too. Even, right. even the old Testament prophet thought, oh, I got it. It's got to be the most fit, tallest, handsome, richest, best guy in the kingdom. Right. Take one look at Eli- Eliab and you think that's him. That's, that's the guy. It. He's the tallest, mm-hmm. best looking, blah, blah, blah. He's the next king. Mm-hmm. But God said, I don't look at the outside. I look at the heart. And yeah. that's obviously not who, ha- who God had in store. Yeah. Um, but it was a shepherd boy mm-hmm. named David. And it is neat that you said God looks at the heart talking about David, which the Bible says, a man after God's own heart. Right. Super good. Super yeah. good. And here's the thing too. John, you uh, mentioned a character from my childhood. I did? Um, yes. Theodore Roosevelt? No. <laughs> no, no. O- on the other opposite side of Theodore Roosevelt. Barney? Barney. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> it's funny because did you say that God made me? That's what it says in the lyrics? 
No. Oh. So Barney's <laughs> tune was in my head for some reason. I'm in the shower. I started singing like, I don't know why. And all of a sudden I'm singing, I'm not you. You're not me. That's how it's supposed to be with a great big God and a job for us to do. Don't be anyone but you. I love that. Whatever. I. It's funny because I really <laughs> thought, well, Barney sang that? I mean, no. that's the song. That's the jingle. That's the tune. How does it really go? Isn't it I love you, you love me, we're a big part happy we're a family. family, maybe? Yeah, with a weird uncle here and a, and a crazy a aunt there. Yeah, right. <laughs> and a kiss. Exactly. And again, that's why our child, our child, yeah. And Barney's gone. <laughs> and we're done with that. And here's the thing. One thing that you did do in the sermon, which was super cool. I like how you sh- give shout outs. You got pe- people got to be on their toes when they're in that worship center. I'll make eye contact with you and I'll say your name. Yes. And Is that what you're saying? Yeah. I like that. I like that <laughs> you you got you super specific and personal with some people. Like, hey, no. And you, you almost, you gave encouragement from the stage. Yeah, I'll never be yeah. what so-and-so is. Yeah. Um, but that's okay. I'm not them. They're not me. Yeah. We're meant, we're uniquely us and on it, purpose. And it brought me back to the conversation uh, that Tara talked about, Tara Heinzman, in our group discussion with the Pierce group. Her talking about how there's things that I'm good at that other people aren't good at, that they're like that vice right. versa. And we really do come together to complete each other mm-hmm. in a body, in a church family. And yeah. that's the same. If you realize that you're made the way that you are to play the part that you're made to do in God's family. That's going to, there's going to be no comparison because Mm -hmm. you're like, okay, John has this gift. That's great. I don't have that gift, but Mm -hmm. it's, it's for the betterment of the kingdom and we're both doing our part. Right. Exactly. And that's how we're designed to Mm -hmm. kind of be a a cumulative, um, Mm -hmm. strength, you know, like, uh, to, to draw strength from one another. You know, I'm not an, I'm not an eye. So, uh, you know, we got ears and eyes and nose, like on our physical body, everything is where it's supposed to be. And God's kingdom is the same way. Mm -hmm. He designed us in the same, uh, with that same, there's a place for everybody with, with equal importance. And I think it was important that you also said that when we doubt ourselves, we're doubting him because yeah. we and we've created- kind of touched on that yeah. before, but, um, yeah, I, I, th- I just think that's a really, uh, interesting perspective to keep in mind, you know, like when we, um, when we're caught up in all of the comparisons, struggling mm-hmm. to be somebody that we're not, mm-hmm. um, essentially we're, we're questioning the creator. Yeah. Yeah. And how, and that would really, hopefully if you think of it that way, you're going to reflect more on your thoughts and your actions a little bit mm-hmm. more before you go into that. Because again, if I, if I'm doubting, okay, well, I, I'm not a confident person. I just can't be a, you know, I just can't talk in a crowd, mm-hmm. but yet God's calling you to speak up and mm-hmm. to do what he's doing there. Don't doubt yourself because you're doubting him. Super yeah. good. Yeah. And I like this when you went into here, you, you said comparison paralyzes the plans for your life. Yeah. Uh, because that's what happens. We get locked up in trying to be something that we're not rather than keeping our head down and keeping our focus on what God has at hand for us. We kind of get, you know, insecurity rears in us mm-hmm. and we start to, to look mm-hmm. around what everybody else is doing. How are yeah. they doing it? What do they have? And then we get so sidetracked mm-hmm. with, trying to be something else that we uh, like the plan that God has kind of get sidelined. Yeah. And it's funny because now I've got, you know, little kids in the house yeah. and we do this from an early age. I mean, I've got a three-year-old that copies the behavior of everyone else in the household. Yeah. And that, I mean, we do that in our world. We're just mm-hmm. a little toddler running around just copying everybody else. When mm-hmm. if we were really asking and seeking the Holy Spirit. So, hey, what does God have for me? What are my plans and my purposes? Rather than comparing and thinking I have to keep up with the Joneses. That was a thing. We don't really hear that phrase anymore. Right. But it's so true, though. We we want our life to be like what we see, and we don't like what we don't have. Yeah, that's right. I mean, next next week, actually, we're mm-hmm. talking about spending. Yeah. Um, and so I'm actually going to use this next week. Mm-hmm. But it's this is a crazy stat that I saw on a Dave Ramsey website this last week. Mm-hmm. Um so in neighborhoods mm-hmm. where people win the lottery, okay, there is a higher percentage of the neighbors going bankrupt oh. than in other areas. Really? Basically because they see all this influx of yeah. funds coming yeah. into one of their neighbors. And so they start overspent. It's just a crazy mm-hmm. Example of the mm-hmm. way that we we live. Yeah. And it's true in every regard. Yeah. And it's also true that we can't, judge ourselves by the people around us. Like, and it, you said it like this, people can't be the standard on which we judge in which we do think. Like, how did you say right. that again? Okay. So, uh, talked about like it, it is right for us 
to spur each other on. Yeah. We're yeah. supposed to encourage one mm-hmm. another. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ, mm-hmm. right? So there is that element of it, but ultimately people can't be the bar. Like yeah. we can't be the standard. That's how we end up with this floating morality, this mm-hmm. relative truth, right? Because like if our standard is so-and-so and they do this, even if it's not godly, if that's our standard, then, you know, we're setting ourselves, we're, we're following that. And then she does this. And so we can just, we can just do this. Really, God sets this um, absolute truth, mm-hmm. a bar that's high. If our standard is set by sinful men, it's just going to go mm-hmm. lower and lower and lower mm-hmm. uh, as we follow our sinful ways until mm-hmm. it's a, a moral free for all. Yeah. Even people that we think are the best right. or doing well or mm-hmm. doing good, those, they're, they're going to fail us every time. Every time. Every time. Yeah, uh, but Jesus doesn't fail us, because, and that's the thing. We can put our standard towards a, a man, and his man it means his name is Jesus. Come on now, that, and and that, that and that's the thing. He did things perfectly in a sinful world, but yet we aren't going to be able to do that. He, you know, he knew his purpose mm-hmm. in this life as as horrific as it was at the end, but he knew that it was going to be a greater good. And if we stop looking around and we, like you said, keep our focus and our head down mm-hmm. on what he's called us to, what our mission is, that's then we're going to fulfill his purpose. Mm-hmm. And there's going to be so much fruit from that, so much fulfillment in our own lives. And I think, I don't, I don't know that I said this in the sermon, but innately, mm-hmm. just like you talked about with your kids, right? Mm-hmm. Like, just like I see with Haven, we have this, um, this innate thing where we will mimic, where mm-hmm. we will mm-hmm. copy. Yep. And truthfully, we were made with that. Yeah. And I think it's just, what are we mimicking? Mm-hmm. What are we, you know, we were made in God's image, not the image of man. We were made yep. to Im- mimic God's mm-hmm. ways, not man's ways. But so often mm-hmm. we, we don't, we can't see past the, the carnal stuff yep. um, that we, we miss out on some of that that godly influence. Yeah. I asked you this earlier that I, that you had a line about, um, about company Mm -hmm. that I thought I was like, was that last week? But you said that we look at the people around us and the Mm -hmm. company that we have and we look at it for our benefit rather than what do you say? Yeah. So, uh, (laughs) we don't just compare ourselves Mm -hmm. to other people. We compare other people to other people (laughs) and we decide like, okay, well maybe this is going to be the crowd that's Mm -hmm. better for me to hang with, or these people are going to make me look Mm -hmm. better. It's not necessarily for our benefit. It's to, it's for the looks of it. It's Mm -hmm. to, to, to look better. And here's your hard statement that you threw at us. Okay. Are you ready for it? Yeah. Comparison is the cancer. What say it? Uh, Comparison. This is, uh, I, I don't, I didn't find this online. Yeah. This is just, I, I feel like this is true. Comparison is the carcinogen mm-hmm. of our spirit. It mm-hmm. is like the silent killer that yeah. eats its way from the inside out. It's a cancer that will eat away your confidence until there's nothing left and will eventually mm-hmm. lead to the death of the life that God has mm-hmm. for you. Um, and so that, that's how I feel. Or that was what I think God uh, says about earthly comparison because yeah. carcinogens are a poison right but they're not a poison that's going to kill you immediately mm-hmm. and that's what's so dangerous about it right it's not like when we go oh hey look at mr jones i wish i was more like him dead mm-hmm. no <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a slow progression over time it's a cigarette in your mouth every single day mm-hmm. and after 50 years of that it's going to do some damage to your lungs mm. and that's the same thing comparison over a lifetime is going to do some damage to your spirit and again we want a fresh new full life that's really good jared thank you and, and if we're if we, I mean, just imagine a church filled of people full of people mm-hmm. filled with the spirit and f- and have, living a full life mm-hmm. which again i can't say that as as great as like mm-hmm. yeah but imagine that imagine a church that's in the middle of a, south, a, a southern illinois town that you've got a bunch of people that's not looking at other people but they're looking up mm-hmm. at what god wants from them and mm-hmm. living that out to a fresh full life yep i think in order to live that life confidence is such a huge portion of that yeah. and our insecurity the comparison that that follows uh the insecurity that follows comparison mm-hmm. um robs us of mm-hmm. confidence yeah. matter of fact i said later uh, in the sermon this is why comparison is so dangerous to the christian yeah. because yeah, constant yeah. comparison kills our confidence and an army that's not confident an army that's not confident will never conquer 
anything. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the problem with comparison is that it makes Mm -hmm. us less confident in ourselves and even more so in the God who made us the way that we are. Yeah. And we're not, when we're talking confidence, we're not talking pride. I think that might be a thing that it's almost like a slope that if you don't, if you're not, if you don't have godly confidence, that Mm -hmm. confidence is going to end up turning into pride. Mm -hmm. But if it's a godly confidence, it's one centered on the Holy spirit. That's what's going to keep you above. Because if we don't have confidence, we're not going to get involved in anything that God's calling us to get involved with. Yeah, when I'm saying confidence, I kind of mean more of like a surety, you know, yeah, like yeah, a, a, yeah. A, a certainty in how you were created. And I you, I think you're you're kind of getting a little violent with your words. You're talking mob, army. I mean. Oh, yeah. That's a good point. <laughs> but, we said mob of the redeemed last week. Yeah. And that's from a song. We didn't even comment on that. That's from your, what song was that? The, I think that the world may know. That the world may know. Yeah. Yeah. That was a good one. And it's, it's, yeah, we're not, we won't go down. I mean, unless you want to. No, no, sorry. (laughs) I didn't think you would. But here's the thing. You were really spinning some rhymes again. Was I? I I couldn't get it down as fast as you put it. Oh, I know what you're you're talking about. Do it. Do it, John. Okay. So we've got, (laughs) we've got all this stuff coming at us from all over the place. And actually Hayden is the one who had kind of, he's like, really, you could probably do something Uh with this or whatever. But like, okay. So what we're seeing, what we need to understand that what we see like on social media Mm -hmm. and in the movies and all this kind Mm -hmm. of stuff is like a compilation of like greatest moments. It's a best of version of life. That's not really attainable. Right. So you need to, here it goes. Use your real eyes to realize the real lies that the picture perfect feed is feeding you. So good. Whatever. (laughs) No, it really is because it brings in me. We, our eyes are on feeds, our uh-huh. social media feeds, yeah. constantly. Yep. And if that is, again, how we're pouring, we're, if we're pouring, though, that's what's pouring into us, mm-hmm. that's really going to wreck our lives. Absolutely. And, and, it's, and it's, I, want, I wanted to be clear, though, the reels that come from Central Christian Church social media are for real. Okay. Stamped authentic. <laughs> but it's funny because, and then that really is, I wonder how many people do, don't really know that that's an R-E-E-L. Yeah, that's yeah. that's true. I mean, yeah. it obviously comes from like a movie reel. Yeah, yeah. Right. And I think, and it's funny because we're in this, you know, helping out. Pacey's doing a great job with our social media yeah. stuff. And it, it's really neat to see a lot of those reels take off because it's almost just a little clip from your sermon. And our hope is that clip l- helps somebody, encourages somebody, mm-hmm. but also helps them dive. Like, man, I need to hear the rest of that. Mm-hmm. And that's why we just take a clip. But we never really do that with our lives. I mean, mm-hmm. really, we, we kind of do, actually. Mm-hmm. We'll take... Like you said, a horrible getting getting the photo taken. You've got, hey, I got this blemish I need to get rid of. Yeah. You're yelling at the kids to get in the picture, but you just see the snapshot. Yeah. Um, you, don't you don't think don't about see before, the whole thing. after. You don't yeah. think about what the rest of that day looked like. Yeah. You're just being presented with this picture perfect snapshot. Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, it's so easy to try and be be that shaped by that yes right and think yeah. i if i don't become that in that mm-hmm. picture then i'm a failure right and then there goes your confidence there goes everything else absolutely and it's it is too i love um how you how you ended and it it almost was again it was a full circle moment mm-hmm. i think you've got a thing with adam and eve in I, the garden I, I do but it's appropriate because the bible does too <laughs> <laughs> But it was a full circle moment. We didn't get a chance. I said it would have been neat if you had time to go back into Saul and David yeah. and how really Saul let an evil spirit in because of his his pride, mm-hmm. his ambition, and his comparison with David. Yeah. You know, he he knew, he, I mean, the kingdom was given over to David for a reason because of the sinful downfall of what Saul did. Mm-hmm. But David, Saul could have really set up, okay, I messed up. This is God's chosen person for David. I'm going to help him, and I'm going to step out of the way when God calls me to. Mm-hmm. Nope. He tried to hold on to, pair, to power. He compared himself to David constantly like, okay, well, it, w- it would be hard, though. I have to help Saul out a little bit. For sure. <laughs> if you're going into a town and people are singing, uh, Saul's killed thousands, thousands, where David has killed his ten thousands. Yeah. The comparison's yeah. oh, going to get yeah. a little... <laughs> right. Yeah. So, but what is it in your life that you're seeing and you're not living your best life? Just yeah. like Adam and Eve, they had literally the best life in the garden. The utopian Threw it away. place that all of uh, the rest of humanity has tried to get to. They had it. Yeah. But Satan started to stir the insecurity, yeah. like the, uh, the human side of Eve and, uh, started Did God really say draw then, comparisons mm-hmm. like, Boy, you know, I mean, you do have it great now, but yeah. think about how it could be. Yeah. 
Think yeah. about like, what if you would do this? What mm -hmm. if you just, I mean, just try it. Right. And then, so she, as I think all of us would have, yeah. uh, she bought it. And, and I think again, it's a full circle moment at the beginning of the, of the, the lesson. You said that when we question ourselves, we question God. When the devil is trying to tempt uh, Eve, he's questioning God. For and sure. Thus, thus questioning God, questioning herself. Mm -hmm. So I think that when we do that, and again, I love that you finished, you put the stamp on the sermon by looking out. Here is what the Bible says about you. Mm -hmm. Don't get, don't let it, don't let it get messed up. Don't right. let it get fuzzy with doing something else. But here is clearly what the Bible says about us. Mm -hmm. And I think if, if we're not in God's word and if we're not surrounding ourselves with the good company, we are going to not see what God says about us. We're going to see what the world says about us. And mm -hmm. that's going to lead to our downfall Absolutely. every single time. Yep. You're right on the money, man. So good job, John. Back at you, Jared. Comparison. Mm -hmm. Next week, spending. Spending. Cha-ching. But it's not like you think it's going to be. No. This is not a tithing sermon. No. I don't want people to think that. I mean, I'm saying this out loud and it's not right. No, I mean, I, I, I for sure we'll talk about the way mm -hmm. that we use our finances. Because it's for the best of us. Uh, but it's, there's... I, so much of like our life gets sucked up with the way that we spend yeah. our money, our mm -hmm. resources, but our resources go beyond our finances. Yeah. Our resources include the way we spend our, our time, the way that we spend our thought life. There's mm -hmm. a lot more to spending than just the money. Yeah. So make sure you're back for that. Make sure you share this with somebody that needs to hear it because maybe you have somebody that really is just not confident and they're looking around at the world and they're not seeing the value that God has in there, in them and what they're doing. Share this with somebody uh, and leave us a comment. Even if it's rude. No, don't leave us a rude mm -hmm. comment. We had a lot, yeah. But here's the thing. Um, Fresh New Full, week four. We're going to wrap it up next week. But first, we have a conversation with Josh, Josh Erica, and Joey, Joey Caps. Caps. They're going to come back right after this. And we're back with the Central Weekly, and we have two very special, well, sorry, three very special guests in the Central Weekly podcast studio, Josh and Erica Cap. Say hi, guys. Hello. Hello. Now, ready, ready, Jovi? And say hi, Jovi. Hello. That's right. We have five-year-old Jovi in the studio. You are probably our youngest guest ever on the Central Weekly. <laughs> And you really had a big hit for Thanksgiving. You were in a Facebook video that went viral. <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> now she gets quiet. Yeah. Here's the thing. We're going to talk with Josh and Erica, talk about how God has been moving in their life here in Southern Illinois in our Mount Vernon Central Christian Church. And here's the cool thing. Erica, you work here. Mm -hmm. uh, you're in our Kid Depot Children's Ministry area at Central. How many years have you been doing that? Um, a little over a year. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to talk everything CAPS is, is and everything in between. So here's the deal. Josh and Erica, are you ready to go in the hot seat? Sure. It's not We're really. Ready. It is kind of warm in here. It, it is gets... warm in here, but. I feel kind of safe now that I see how much editing goes into yeah. this. That's right. <laughs> yes, that's right. So Josh, go ahead and tell us a little bit about your family. Uh, give us a little about the ons and ends of where you guys grew up. Um, let's see. Erica and I have been married for 15 years this October. Mm -hmm. No, and no. 16 years this October. Sorry, 16 oh. years this yeah. October. We can edit that. <laughs> <laughs> and Jovi is going to be five. In February in about three 19th. Weeks. February yep. 19th. And tell us about where you guys grew up at. I grew up um, south of Bell Rive. Okay, yeah. Yeah, kind of out in the country. Uh huh. Um, I spent a lot of summers once I was old enough. Down on my grandpa's farm. Yeah. I would work there through the summer. Uh huh. Yeah. And then you are um, in construction around town. Yes. And that's like a history of capses is our construction, right? Well, I You have, guys, uh, mainly men that can work with their hands. I, my uncle, <laughs> my uncle is, uh, yeah, he works for the Holloways. Mm -hmm. And I actually started there when I was 18. Yeah. And I worked there. I think two or three years. Yeah. And then I went to work for a contractor in Thompsonville mm -hmm. that built homes and, and uh, did a lot of remodel work. Yeah. And then I felt led to um, step out and do that on my own. Yeah. How long uh, has that been? 10 years. 10 years? Yeah. I was 20. I think I was 24. I think, well, it was, it's either 10 11 or 11. this year. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Yeah. 11 this year. And that's the cool thing about a lot of our guests on the Central Weekly are entrepreneurs. 
um, a lot of small business owners in that will listen and have been guests on the Central Weekly. Because and that's really the thing we want to tell stories about people in, around, and through Central. And especially with Erica working on staff, we try to have getting all of our staff as guests to tell their story because uh, we want our congregation and our church family to know who's leading stuff, and especially with our kids. And and Josh, you in the area, I know a lot of people respect you because of the work that you do, and really just the kind of the cool guy that you are. Like Except for that cousin of yours <laughs> yeah, that works cousin, here. We're not even yeah, going to talk about him. But here's, but it is really cool because, Josh, you're doing some stuff here at the church lately, too. Tell us a little bit about what you've done um, here at Central lately. Uh, let's see. We what? We added two classrooms yeah. for the Kid Depot mm-hmm. and uh, converted two other classrooms to create yeah. a hallway. Yeah. So... I think that went well. Yeah, I really think, and and to me, you're one of the most skilled painters I've ever seen. Who was the buddy that helped you paint? Uh, my father-in-law. Mike. See, yeah, I, my dad. <laughs> I am. In, I was impressed because I I'm usually a little anal when it comes to painting. Don't look in this room because I helped paint a little bit. But if the, when I see a straight line, especially on a textured wall, I'm impressed. <laughs> I think that is just a skill that a lot of people don't have. But when I see it, I know it. And good job. And what's your dad's name? My dad's name's Mike. Mike, Mike Holby. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mike, yeah. Yep. And oh, Holby, I forgot that's okay. Yeah. Now I'm putting the Holbys together. All the yes. Because Kelsey, yes. yeah. Okay. Yeah, Kelsey and Tyler. See, yeah. I'm putting people together. Because mm-hmm. that's the thing. I mean, I didn't grow up around here. So fa- that's really hard for me to figure out family ties until I really sit down with people and ask them. And yeah. that's a cool thing. We I mean, we've had plenty of conversations together, you know, over in the atrium and around, but we've never really sat down and talked family. So okay. um, here's the next question. Erica, tell us where you grew up. Um, I grew up on the north side of Mount Vernon in the country. Um, I lived right next door to my grandparents and my aunt and uncle and my grandparents had a farm and Mm -hmm. there's like a lot of, a lot of my childhood memories are centered around the farm, you know, and everything. So we didn't do the kind of farming that Josh's family did where they did a lot of crops. We had cows and chickens. Livestock. Livestock. Yeah. Yeah, And so I have a lot of memories with that. I always give my Maria a hard time because she always said that her dad, a farmer, Ed, and I was like, in college, I was like, I mean, he doesn't have any, you know, agriculture. It's all, he has beef cattle mm-hmm. and some horses. I said, he's more of a rancher, right? Yeah. So things, again, I never learned growing up in the big city of Effingham. All right, let's hear a little bit about your Central story. How did you guys start coming? How long it's been? And why? Why did you start coming to Central? Um, we've been here for, what, like four and a half years. I think Jovi was like six months old whenever mm. we started coming. And um, the church that we came from was the church that Josh grew up in. Oh, yeah. And we were, you know, we liked the church. We were really Mm -hmm. involved in it. There's Mm -hmm. a lot of good people there. We just Mm -hmm. kind of felt like it was time to shift gears, you know. Um, It just, there was just something there that wasn't um, working for us anymore. Um, And not in like a negative way. It was just, it was just time for a change. You you felt more leading to, I felt more leading to um, seek something out. Mm Mm-hmm. To say, to pinpoint what that is, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but there was a heaviness. Yeah. And we did try visiting a few churches. But this was this was probably the first church that we came to that um, there was a there was some peace. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, there's there's good churches. So we know a lot oh, of people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The churches that we yep. visited, there was usually a connection. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Can't really pinpoint why we felt led. Yeah. Um, hope to see that. Hope to see that come full circle someday, yeah. Yeah. and know what it is. Yeah. But, but I just know that there was peace. Yeah. And that's the thing with a lot of decisions that God puts on our hearts. It's we don't understand them in the moment. We just say, "Hey, I'm going to l- l- follow where you're leading me." And I don't. I'm. You know, I can ask some questions, of course, but I might not understand all the pieces and why they're yeah. fitting together this way until mm-hmm. years later. Yeah. And now I, I'm sorry, I missed a big vital question. We're in our timeline of the caps. How did you guys meet? That's a big one, right? High school. High school. So high school. went to high school together. We, we sat did. next together in English class. Oh. He thought that I was really smart and he cheated off of me, but oh. I really wasn't as smart as he thought I was. <laughs> he was like, hey, I'm supposed to be getting A's <laughs> off of this cheating. It's not, it's not paying off. And so, so the, what high school is this? Mount Vernon. Mount Vernon. Oh, okay. yeah. 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 See, I'm We've still... never lived anywhere else. We've yeah. always lived in Jefferson County. So, you know, born and, and raised. Mount Vernon and... is such a, I mean, the high school brings mm-hmm. so many schools in. That's the thing about driving a bus. I'm realizing some of those guys that bring on those routes are going, gosh, 30 miles yeah. outside to bring kids into Mount Vernon High mm-hmm. School. Um, so when you guys met, was it dating right away? Or no. how did you guys decide, hey, this is a relationship I want to pursue? 
I don't know. We were friends for uh-huh. a while. Like I feel like we met what, like sophomore year, I think. I think so. Yeah. And we we had some friends of friends, you know, and uh-huh. that was kind of how we met and we had classes together, but we didn't really start dating until the end of our senior year. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, that was I don't I don't know. I don't really know how it just we just hung out and enjoyed spending time together and yeah. 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 A lot of Josh was probably a serial, serial dater before Eric. I can just see that. Just lots of girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> You can edit this. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing. When you guys, so you, 15 years, where'd you guys get married? Here in t- around? T- At the church that okay, uh, yeah. Josh grew up in. Yeah. yeah. Who, who married you? My grandpa. Oh, yeah. that's sweet. Yes. And now he's a preacher, right? Was. Yeah. Was. Okay. Yeah. Passed on. Yeah. But yes, yeah. he was a preacher. I remember mm-hmm. Ethan yeah. talking about him. And that's, I mean, I really uh, just, I appreciate your family. And just, again, hardworking guys that love the Lord. And Here's the thing. It's something I admire about the Caps is they're quiet men, at least what I see, and they do what they need to do, and they live a quiet, humble life. That's at least the example I've seen through the Caps design. Come to our Christmas party. (laughs) Yes, yes. Come to the Caps Christmas, and it'll be a totally different, your eyes will be open to a totally different version of our family. (laughs) So lessons you guys have learned, even just the midst of a relationship, 15 years married, and having Jovi now for almost, almost five years, February 19th. What, like, what things have you learned? Um, we are each other's best friend, yeah. you know, and I feel like that's just been a vital part of our marriage. You know, um, we just, we always wanted, we, we've done things together. Um, we've always want to spend time together. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like on the weekends, whenever some people might go and hang out with their friends yeah. or their like my case for a long time, I would hang out with my mom. Yeah. Um, we don't really do that anymore. We, yeah. we spend time together, yeah. you know? So that's been, that's just been a really cool part of our relationship. That's how it started. And mm-hmm. it's continuing that it's way. Continuing to grow that mm-hmm. way. Yeah. That's something I've seen you guys, the three of you are really tight knit. Um, yeah. and that's a cool thing too. I want to talk homeschool. Um, when yeah. did, was that a decision that you guys always had or no. when Jovi came along, you're like, no, this is something I want to do. Oh no. I was a public school teacher for yeah. seven years. And I said many times mm-hmm. I will never homeschool uh-huh. and I've learned don't ever say never because yep. what you say is going to come to pass. But uh-huh. I don't know. Um, I don't I think it was two, was it a couple of years ago that we started feeling the heaviness of mm-hmm. we needed to yeah. really be mindful yeah. of her education. We talked yeah. like private schools and the cost of those yep. was just, it just wasn't making much sense for us mm-hmm. to spend that kind of money on school. And so we're like, well, why don't we try this homeschool thing out? Yeah. So, I mean, we've not officially started yet because yeah. she's still preschool yeah. age, but I mean, we're going to, we're going to dive in and we yeah. have some friends that are homeschooling with us. And yeah. I think that's going to be, um, it's just gonna be really cool to see how all that plays out. Yeah, so you might I'm have excited. recognized the, these two voices from our episode last week. And you guys are probably the first guest to really appear in two episodes back to back. back, to back. That's pretty cool. I mean, that's what something I would I would put it on a T-shirt. <laughs> back to back guests on the. You're running out of people to ask. Last, <laughs> last week was was good though because that was kind of a trial run to yes. be like, okay, this isn't as as intimidating as it should be. Of course, we had what fourteen other people yeah. with us, so. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there was a couple of people like Landon specifically. I wish we would have gotten him to talk a little bit more, but there was a lot to <laughs> yeah. talk about. And it's funny because when I put that invitation out there and we were thinking about it, we thought maybe, f- you know, four, five, six people total. But when Adam texts me, he goes, okay, no, all 16 have mm-hmm. said yes. I'm like, mm-hmm. strap on, kids. here we go. Yep. And we brought all our do. kids with yes. us. <laughs> and, I mean, how many kids again? Tell me. Like 23. Like 23. Yeah. And you guys yeah. are kind of the rarity with just Jovi yeah. at this point. At yeah. this point, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, but here's the cool thing. That group, you said you had a lot in common to begin with, mm-hmm. but you guys have opened up. What, what if, again, some lessons that you've learned in that group setting? Uh, Josh, just, we won't have to talk free childcare this time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just been good to have some friends out there that yeah. are in similar stages yeah. of life. You know, we all have kids. Um, I mean, there's, it's, it's interesting how we've all kind of come together because there's a couple teachers in the mm-hmm. group. There's a couple yeah. nurses in the group. There's a couple homeschool moms mm-hmm. in the group, you know? And so it's just been kind of neat for me just to kind of see how all these yeah. connections have been made. And, yeah. and, um, like Lauren, I would really like for us to have some homeschool time together, mm-hmm. you know, with our yeah. kids. Yeah. You guys can have your own everything. co-op. We could, we really could, <laughs> but 
but that's something for me just to have some people with us, you know, that are in the same area of their life, you know, dealing with the same kinds of things. It's just good to have, to know you're not alone in that, in that sense. And that was really good about the lesson that John spoke about those core relationships and knowing that those people that we are, we put ourselves around are really going to influence us if we know it or not. So if we're making a conscious effort of saying, okay, these are the people I'm choosing to be around. These are the ones that I know I can learn from and they can learn from me. Go ahead, Josh. There was, there was a time, not so much this past lesson, but the one before for us, where we would get together and it seemed like our, seemed like our conversations was always going back to our children. Yeah. And it was uh-huh. good. It was good. I know it was good for me. Yeah. Um, everyone could share their experience, yeah. what they were going through or challenges they were having as parents with their kids. Mm-hmm you know, what choices to make. And mm-hmm. it was good to, to kind of share that in a group and see what others were thinking. And, and a lot of times, yeah, a lot of times, I don't know, that was a big, that was a big year or group time for us. Yeah. I felt like, because we, we spent a lot of time talking about kids. It yeah, seemed like our conversations did. always trailed that way. Yeah. And that's the thing about raising kids. You, you don't know what questions to ask. It's not like, okay, you're about to have a kid and you're like, okay, I'm going to sit down with my parents and get all these questions out that I have about raising children. You almost don't know it until you come upon mm-hmm. those questions. Like, yeah. okay, well, I'm dealing with this now. I, I never even anticipated dealing with this. Yeah. Or these feelings are how do I, you know, how do I parent this behavior that my kid has? And, and that's, a, again, a group setting is ideal because you've got kids at different age levels, but you've got kids at different behavior levels mm-hmm. too. You have, might have shy kids. How do you deal with shy kids? How do you deal with, you know, exuberant children that like to talk a lot and have big brown eyes? Uh, I don't, was that, was that Jovi? I think he's talking about you. <laughs> hey, I had a mandarin orange today too. She's eating a, are you eating a cutie? Mm-hmm. They're yep. the best. <laughs> They're the best. But you got to get the seedless. Sometimes you get a seed yeah, and it's like, it's what? what is this? Yeah. How did people live before, when they didn't have seedless fruit? So good, right? Good they job. went to the store. They went, they went to, to the, the store. store. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else that you guys, marriage, life in general, lessons that you've learned, especially being a parent and being married for 15 years now? Or in small, or having your own business, Josh? Oh, man. Mm hmm. <laughs> there is a lot of le- lot, lot of lessons there. Yep. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I feel like being a parent is um one of the coolest gifts that God uh-huh. can give to his people because ever since Joby's been born, like my mindset of how God views us has changed so much. Yeah. Like I can see I, I can just see all of his traits come full circle whenever yeah. you ha- are become a parent, you know, and it's it's just been really cool yeah. to see. I've always lo- I've always said that you don't know how selfish you are until you become a parent. And it's it's like that in so many different lives. You don't know how selfish you are, then you get married, and you're like, wow, I'm really selfish. And then you're like, okay, I've learned a lot. I'm not that selfish anymore. And then you have kids, and you're like, wow, no, I'm still yeah. very selfish. Yeah. And it's just, again, but it's neat how God has set up the family because you learn, like you said, you learn the heart of the father mm-hmm. by parenting little ones. Yes. You understand, okay, wow, I can love something this much, but yet God loves me even more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's just astounding to learn. Yeah. Um, Jovi, do you have any pets? Tell about your pets. Um, I have 11 chickens and one cat and one dog. 11 chickens? That's fun. Do you have, do you have, do you name your chickens? Um, what are some of the names of the chickens? Captain America and Buddy and, um, Iron Man and Cutie Pie. Those are good names. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. It's almost like, again, are you going to start selling? Do you sell any of those eggs that you get? Yes. Oh, that's see, and especially with our current climate, those egg prices she, have doubled. She must tripled. be pocketing that money because I, <laughs> I'm not I don't know any anything about yes. it. <laughs> I sell we, some black market yeah. with the eggs. Yes, yeah. I, yeah. I don't yeah. know. We've shared some eggs with some people, but fifty dollars for eggs. <laughs> we better not You've put that in here. there. Is that a do- for a dozen? Is that a dozen? Fifty dollars for a dozen? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, we there's the thing. To. That's okay to do a shameless plug on the Central Weekly. If you're looking for Jovi Caps eggs for twelve dozen, no, not no. just a dozen. a dozen. That's a lot. Of, <laughs> fifty dollars, maybe fifty dollars for twelve dozen. We don't have Again, $12 I'm a city kid, cul de sac kid, grew up, so I don't know any of this stuff. <laughs> Anything else that you guys have? Because I brought you on really because I I knew it was going to be a little bit because you guys are quiet people. Yeah. But that's a good thing. But here's the chance if you have been wanting to say something to the central family. Here's your chance. Because I know you, you will say no if I ask you to do communion. <laughs> but what else do you guys got for us? Uh, 
Oh, I don't know. I've, I've really enjoyed being a part of this church and getting to be a part of the staff here yeah. at the church, you know, because it's just, whenever you're at a church that's this size, you yeah. don't really know the heart of the people that are in different ministry positions. Yeah. But working here has really given me that, um, that view of, of everyone that there's just, everyone here has such a heart for God. And it's yeah. just been really cool to see how that has um, just affected me and how much I really enjoy being a yeah. part of this church. Yeah. You've been a really good, uh, 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 staff person to come in just because that's been a rotating mm-hmm. for a while just because yeah. it is what it is and yeah. and it's really it's we it to have a um a stay-at-home mom i guess you're part-time and stuff yeah. like that but it really is essential to that job because we need somebody that can help with all those little odds and mm-hmm. ends and just kind of connect dots i know that you are a glue person yeah. on the weekends a lot of times too because you're mm-hmm. running around filling in for a lot of people but i know specifically you're in mostly the preschool nursery yes. area a lot yeah. too yeah and you're just a welcome Welcome, you know, big smile on your face whenever our, at least we're checking our kids in. And I know that it's so important to, um, to just have an environment where families feel welcomed yeah. and little kids feel welcome. There's so mm-hmm. many times where I see the kids are dragging the parents into yeah. church yeah. and that's just the cool thing about Kid Depot. And then kind of to circle back with our conversation with what Josh mentioned, he's been helping out with construction. That's the really neat thing. We've had to be creative in what we've had and develop some more space because we've been growing so much. Yeah. Um, so bringing in some more small groups, Hey, how can we use, this was a huge hallway. Can we make it actually put two classrooms here mm-hmm. and we, three classrooms Yeah. and you did in that big hallway. Yeah. They actually cleaned the closet out, I think. And, <laughs> and, uh, had yeah. some kids small grouping, you yeah. know, I, what used to yeah. be a closet. I'm not going to say they, I'm not going to say they put them in a closet, yeah. but no. they cleaned they it out. Converted. Converted. My dorm room college it. used to be yeah. a closet. So I know what it's like to live. It was in a closet. big closet. Yeah. It was a big, that's the thing. If we cleaned out closets just at central, we would have so much room oh, yeah. for more things, yeah. more activities. <laughs> but well, I, I really appreciate you guys coming in, but here's the thing. I'm not letting you go yet. You're going to, we're going to ask you the question. How has God been working in your life lately? We're going to take a quick break. Take a breather. Jovi, you can go to the bathroom if you need to. We'll be right back after this. And we're back with the Central Weekly with our guests, Josh, Erica, and Jovi Caps. And we're going to ask them the question. Ready, guys? Here it is. How has God been working in your life lately? I would say what's been on my mind a lot lately is um, purpose of life. Mm-hmm. So probably a couple years ago, uh, work became work became a lot mm-hmm. and which is good but at the same time it kind of reached that point it was a blur uh, you felt like you felt like that's that's all you did and all your mind was yeah. consumed with yeah. and it was almost aggravating yeah um, I mean I take responsibility mm-hmm. serious so when I have work to do that's what's mm-hmm. on my mind but mm-hmm. at the same time it reached that point of what's the purpose yeah of life and actually just last night I saw someone on a on a platform mm-hmm. online platform mm-hmm. they had um, they had for a name what am I doing here mm-hmm. and it caught my attention because I guess I've tried to think of that differently probably mm-hmm. over the last couple of years I've tried to change my mind I still care obviously mm-hmm. about my work but I'm trying to see purpose in each day mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. see God's purpose in each day. So mm-hmm. I've, you know, it's been something I've prayed about, try to pray about daily is yeah. I pray this day has purpose yeah. for him. Yep. Um, I pray that my words and my actions yeah. show and share yep. him to those around me. Um, I've asked that he establish my work for me. So... Um, you know, I don't know. Just trying to have purpose outside of me. Yeah. Because um, I, I guess there's, I guess that's the intent in life. Yeah. Truly. Yeah, I think, and I that's going to speak to a lot of people. I think I know it spoke to me just because there's so much where we can just put our head down, see the task, and not see the people, and not see the purpose in the people around us, and. For you to really start your day every day to, to say, hey, everything that happens today is a gift and a blessing and I need to look at it that way and I need to not be so 
task oriented like is i think that's what you're kind of t- saying right? and I, you know hopefully i'm i probably still come off that way um, <laughs> because they're you know i mm-hmm. i try to set goals and mm-hmm. and reach those goals but yeah. but i do try to view life a little bit different yeah. than than the way it was trending too and that's something that's yeah. been um yeah that's something that's yeah. been on my mind for a while erica what you got for us all right i feel like here lately and this is going to sound strange for me to say but i feel like here lately um, God has been teaching me that it's okay to, um, say no to things yeah. and that it's not, a, it, like you don't have to do everything. And yeah. I'm one of those people. I'm a yes person. Mm-hmm. I'm a people pleaser. And, um, here, like, I feel like in the last year, maybe since I started working here, maybe a little bit before it was like, it's okay to say no, yeah. because you have to take care of your family. You have to take care of your relationship with God first and then prioritize the things that you can or cannot do. And, and it's okay to say no. Um, you know, so that's something that he's been working on me with for, for a little bit now. So, and I still don't like to say no to people, but, (laughs) but it's, it's it's getting easier. It's neat that you kind of learn in that lesson going into a new job, um, into a job that could be a lot because you're going to have a lot of people, especially at the church wanting your time and thinking yeah. that what they're asking is the most valuable thing in the world and you have to do it right now. Mm-hmm. And I, I see that in both of you. I see that you're very protective of your family and knowing what's, what needs to be the priority first. Yeah. Um, and knowing again, those, le- those things that you're saying no to aren't not, they're not, that's like when you say no to something, it's like saying, oh, that's not saying, oh, that's not important. It's yeah. just, that's not what I need to put my time into right now yeah. because God has put a lot on our plates mm-hmm. to begin with and he's put a lot of purposes and, and plans ahead of us. And if we keep saying no to things that weren't really aligned to what he had for us, we're going to be exhausted and burned that's out. That's right. Amen on that. That so, is right. Yeah. And that's the neat thing about John's lesson this weekend comparison is we can really get into that game mm-hmm. of saying, okay, well, they got this, they, their kids are doing this and well, they're that far advanced in their careers. And no, just keep, keep your head on what God has for you. And, and just, I'm just grateful to talk to you guys and hear your stories about how God's been working in your life in just simple ways. And, but yet they're meaningful to so many other people because you guys do impact a lot of people relationally that probably doesn't get noticed because you do it behind the scenes and you do it quietly. Yeah. Um, but just, yeah, thank you for being, for being who you are, the Caps yeah. Assistant. Thank you for yeah. those <laughs> kind words. Yeah. yeah, thanks for having us. And that's it for episode number 48 of the Central Weekly. Gosh, I love the Caps family, don't you, John? I really do. Josh, Erica, Jovi, the best. We'll see you back here next week for the Central Weekly. Bye, everybody.